So I used to be the kind of hiker that would just pick up a stick along the way and use that as a hiking pole. Then I found trekking poles and it completely changed the way that I hiked. In this video, I wanna go through the three main types of trekking poles so you can get a bit of an understanding what's out there on the market and maybe you can use this as a bit of a buying guide to find the right pole for you. Hey guys, welcome to the channel or welcome back. If you're new here, this channel is all about you preparing your mind, your body and your gear for the mountains so you can get outside, challenge yourself and grow from that experience. Today we're talking trekking poles, all the different styles, all the different types and hopefully this will serve as a bit of a buying guide for you if you're new to trekking poles. I think there is so many different styles on the market. It's very easy to get confused and overwhelmed. So I'm gonna help you out a little bit by going through what type of poles and what features match up best with your preferred style of hiking. I want to point out that this video is in no way paid for or sponsored by Lecky. They took the time out of their day to teach me all about trekking poles, which is basically how this video came together. So it's a way of saying thanks. Also, they gave me a pair of trekking poles for the year. So the first category of poles that we're going to be talking about have become super popular in the last few years, both with ultralight hiking and trail running becoming more and more popular, and that is the three section pole. So this one is the Lecky Micro Trail Vario and loving the three section pole. But generally what these poles are used for is for trail running, ultralight hiking, and uh, I guess just general day hiking. They are super strong for their weight. These ones are made from carbon fiber. They're the only carbon fiber pole that I have. And it's worth knowing that carbon fiber is the best material, I believe, for absorbing vibration. So if you're going quite hard all day and you're worried about really intense vibration through your hands, then carbon fiber is gonna be better. Carbon fiber is also the most sturdy under downward force. So that's another plus that you uh, might wanna look into as well. The downside of carbon fiber though is that they have a tendency to kind of shatter. So essentially carbon fiber is much more vulnerable to damage when bending and flexing, whereas aluminium tends to deal with that a little bit better. Obviously the most distinguishing feature of three section hiking poles is that they do break down tying into three sections. So probably one of the best benefits is that you can put them away without taking your backpack off. So you can literally fold this up, reach around in your backpack, slide it in, you know, maybe your water bottle section. Pretty much impossible to do with any other style of pole. I mean, if you compare the average trekking pole with the three section foldable pole, you can see that they, this one barely fits in the frame and this one is tiny. So if that's gonna be a big priority for you, then look into the three section foldable pole. What I'm loving about this model in particular is that it has a cork handle. Cork is beautiful for drying quickly, wicking away sweat, and it just gives the most comfortable in hand feel. So that's something to think about, especially if you're doing long distance hiking. Like if you're gonna be hiking for months and months at a time, I would really consider what works best for your skin. Uh, and for me, just pure natural cork is the best thing for me. Not all three section poles have this uh, tricky little uh, handle. I don't know how I feel about these yet. I'm still getting used to it. I'm doing a lot of trail running at the moment and uh, they're certainly useful when trail running, but as a hiking, trekking thing, I think they're kind of annoying and I'd probably just prefer to use a regular pole. Yeah, I guess it's something you've got to try out and see what works for you. The downside of three section poles is that they very rarely have interchangeable baskets. So if you are going to be doing some long distance hiking and you're going from a summer environment through to a winter environment, eventually when you get to that winter environment, you're going to need a snow basket and snow baskets and these three section foldable style poles generally don't mix. So really think about if you're going to be doing any winter hiking, will it be significant enough that you'll need a snow basket? If that's the case, then you'll probably want to go for the next style of pole, which is the telescopic variety. So this is the Lecky Voyager. These are really kind of your staple trekking poles. They're probably the most durable and they're the kind of pole that you want to use if you tend to be carrying more pack weight than uh, doing 
ultra line hiking. Most three section poles you'll find are made from aluminium because it's lightweight, it's strong. This one is certainly made from aluminium. And this style of pole really is best for heavy backpacking missions, winter hiking. I would say that most models of this telescopic design will come with interchangeable baskets, but it's always worth double checking. In terms of general use, I've found telescopic poles to be the best in terms of absorbing the impact for when you're hiking, especially downhill, and absorbing that shock and vibration from, you know, like constantly hammering the ground as you're coming down. So if that's something that is important to you, I would really look at getting a telescopic pole rather than like a clamp flick lock style pole, just because I've been testing these two poles at the same time and the telescopic variety definitely is more comfortable uh, when you're coming downhill and it definitely absorbs a lot more of that vibration. Even if that pole does have like uh, a little absorption cushion and some sort of anti-shock system, the telescopic variety, at least with these two that I was testing, is better for absorption and vibration. Probably one of the most important things to think about when you're shopping for trekking poles is is the strap going to be comfortable, especially if you're doing many, many days of hiking and, you know, multi-day stuff, because uh, you tend to wear out if you're using these all day. The skin in your hand gets really worn out from having trekking poles with crappy straps. The Lecky straps are very, very basic um, and very, very comfortable. So I think a lot of companies probably try and overdo the, you know, engineering and the design of their straps. Just keep it simple, something that's gonna be comfortable, soft on the skin, but still very sturdy. And the one thing that I really like about Lecky is that they are super easy to adjust. I mean, there's really no messing around. You just pull it and it locks and it stays locked. So I think a lot of the other poles that I've used, for example, this one, this locking mechanism is, terrible and a lot of the time it just kind of pops out <laughs> that's something that's really annoying as i'm going uphill putting a lot of force into the strap and pff, pop it just comes out i mean i can put it straight back in but still super annoying one thing that uh none of the poles that i'm reviewing uh in this video have is this lower section which is super uh, useful when you're going up a really steep section. You can quickly change from this part of the handle to the lower part of the handle, so you're not reaching up super high. And um, you know, so if there's a short, steep section, that's really nice to be able to change to a foam grip that's directly lower down. One thing that's cool and worth noting about a lot of Lecky trekking poles is, is that they have a uh, hollow handle so you can see right there that you can see straight through the handle which allows airflow into your hand which prevents you getting sweaty and uh, uncomfortable throughout a day of trekking so that's something worth looking out for in a design for trekking poles especially if you're going to be hiking in summer probably the only downside about telescopic poles is that they do have a tendency to break um, the reason why is because there's a few more moving parts. So if we have a look at the inside of uh, this Lecky Voyager, you've got a screw kind of expansion system. And I've had lots of different trekking poles over the years. Many of them have broken and it's always the telescopic ones that go first. So, and when I say break, what I'm, what I'm speaking about is that you know, locking mechanism failing to the point where you can't lock the pole out. So that's um, super annoying halfway through a trip. I think there's a lot more like sort of technical engineering uh, and moving parts that go into a telescopic pole. So if you're after something simple that's going to be more field repairable, things that you can easily get spare parts for, then I recommend you go for the final option, which is a clamp or flick lock style pole. Okay, for flick lock style poles, the example that I have is the Lecky Kumbu Light Anti-Shock. Uh, so cool because it has that mechanism that I was talking about before that is adding a little bit of absorption. Probably the best thing about flick lock style trekking poles or what Lecky calls speed lock is that they are super, super quick. I like to make little adjustments as I go up and downhill and uh, that is made very easy by this flick lock system. 
does become a little bit arduous, you know, doing the twists and twists and twists and twists with um, twist lock poles. These are much easier for that. So if you are the kind of person that's gonna be changing the height a lot, definitely go for a flick lock style pole. This style pole is definitely a bit of an all-rounder, certainly capable of doing heavier backpacking style uh, hiking where you're carrying a lot of weight in your backpack. So if you are going to be carrying a lot, I think definitely move towards something like this. Another thing that's worth looking at when you're shopping for trekking poles is what sort of tip they have now. Pretty much every pole out on the market now has carbide tips, but it's worth looking at the shape. So this is a concave tip, and I think all of the poles that I'm reviewing today have that concave tip where it kind of sinks in a little bit. That's what I found to be most useful. That's what I found that gives me the most grip. The other style that you'll see around is like a star-shaped grip, and I just don't feel like they grip on the rock as well as the carbide tips do. So that's something you might want to test out for yourself and consider when you're shopping for trekking poles. Obviously this model is capable of having interchangeable baskets so you can put a snow basket on there or you can take this general hiking basket off completely. Really doesn't matter with this kind of pole or the telescopic pole how tall you are. They have a huge expansion range. Um, if you are really short or if you are really tall, some of the you know three section foldable poles are semi-fixed in height so they have a much shorter range where you can expand them so that's definitely something to think about as well in terms of weight the lecky kumbu light is 250 grams or 0.56 pounds so yeah it's not the lightest pole out on the market but i would really consider the relationship between weight and durability i think it's something super important you don't want to have to buy a whole new trekking pole halfway through a trip, especially if you're looking at using your trekking pole as support for a tent. That's probably not going to happen with one of those three section foldable poles. Definitely go for a telescopic or a flick lock pole if that's the case. The probably the thing that I like most about flick lock poles is if and when things go wrong, <laughs> they are pretty easy to repair. But honestly, especially with this model, there's hardly anything that can go wrong. One thing that you want to look out for is that the adjustable section here, that, that bolt should never be able to come undone. It should be totally fixed. Some of the issues that I've had in the past with other poles is that that, um, that nut can completely come off. But even with that being said, it's still a better option for in terms of field repairability because there is much less moving parts. I mean, that's the inside of the pole there. And compared to a telescopic pole, you've got much more moving parts, more design features that could go wrong. Whereas the flick lock here on the right is literally nothing there all of the engineering is on the outside of the pole and it's all in that flick lock system so heaps better in terms of being field repairable and less things to go wrong the one thing about lecky is that these guys only do poles they don't make anything else they all of their research and development all of their expertise goes into just making ski poles and hiking poles so that's worth something considering when you're shopping for a trekking pole. So there are your three main different categories of poles, three amazing poles, all from Nike. And I know what you're probably thinking, these are really high quality poles, but they're also on the higher end of the price range, which is totally true. But as always, you get what you pay for when you invest in good equipment for the long term, it generally tends to last a lot longer. However, there are some excellent budget options out on the market and I just happen to have one delivered in the last few days. So in the next video, I'm going to be reviewing this. I mean, this is a super budget poll, but for the price and the features that you're getting and its quality, it's pretty amazing. So. I'll link it up when it's done so you can check it out here. Guys, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. If you got some value out of it, please hit the like button. And uh, if you've got any comments, put them in the comments section below. I'll see you on the summer.